I remember the first line of the letter was um, to start this letter without any words. I got so high, I scratched till I bled. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh, I, know, I know, I know, I know. Welcome. We are Neil, Luke, and Dave. 340 somethings reminiscing on the runners and riders of 90s guitar music. We look at the bands who soundtracked our youth on both sides of the pond and interview some of our heroes from the bands that defined a generation. You'll hear about the good, the bad, and the ugly of 90s guitar music. This podcast is stupid and contagious. Episode. 33 of the Stupid and Contagious podcast. It's my favourite number. Is it? Speed of a record. Ah, uh, RPM. No, yeah. yeah. Good one. 33 and a third. Yeah. Yeah. Wang number seven, I think it is. But we're going to be talking about 1992. Where were you in 92? That's what we we're going to call the podcast, isn't it? Initially. It was. That's the original name. Someone else had fucking nicked it. Uh, it was a good thing, though. It wasn't quite right for the podcast, was it? I'm glad we changed it. Would have limited. <laughs> yeah, just this one episode. Before we go on, Luke, do you want to uh, retract your uh, account of what you think's happened to Kate Middleton? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Doubling down. But didn't you say she was dead? No, 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 no. Oh, it was another conspiracy theory I heard that she was actually dead. Yeah, no. Not no, your one. That's ridiculous. Not that yours that's is ridiculous. a conspiracy theory. No. I apologise. I'm telling the truth. Dave, what have you been up to this week? Nothing, really. Luke? <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I set myself the mission of watching all of the Police Academy films. Fucking hell. Why? <laughs> I thought it would be a laugh. This is the thing. Right? So, the first one is good. Um, yeah. Good characters. The story makes sense. Um, yeah. Funny set pieces, unnecessary boobs, all the stuff you love about an 80s <laughs> comedy, right? Yeah. And then yeah. after that, they're so bad. They're unwatchable. I got to I got to four and I gave up the mission. I couldn't do it. It's, it's so bad. I love the guy that can make those noises. Yeah, he's That's good. good. Stimulate. I'll just watch it just for that. I like the guy who does that as good. He's got the funny voice. Oh, Bobcat Goldthwait. Yeah, do the voice. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one. <laughs> Is he in all of them? He's not in the first one. He appears in the second one as a as a gang leader, as the bad guy. And then he yeah. pops up in the third. He joins the police force. Yeah, changes yeah. sides. They're so bad, that, but they're but all the jo- they're made for like ten year old boys. All the jokes in them are like like the cheesiest like Disney Channel crap. They're just they're, they're so bad. They're so bad. Oh, I don't know about that. The old commandant, whatever is Lasard or whatever, wasn't he getting a blowjob underneath the old? Uh, See, that's in the first thing. one. That's all the good. <laughs> first one's good. <laughs> After that, they're just they're just ridiculous. Is Gutenberg in all of them? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, he, he wasn't in the final one. There was one in the 90s, and he wasn't in that. Uh, Neil, what have you been up to? Last night, I watched the uh, that the L7 documentary, Bricks Ahead. That's good, right? Fucking brilliant, yeah. Someone said about it in a group the other week. Might be Matt, I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, so I gave that a watch. Yeah, bloody brilliant. Yeah. What a story. Quite a lengthy one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I thought it was really good. They got fucked over by the industry, right? Didn't make any money. None. Well, they said the peak of their career, like when Bricks Are Heavy was out and stuff, they were each earning about $500 a month. But speaking of L7, I've got a Shed 7 ticket. Have you? Oh, wow. Yeah. They're going, they're going to play in Cardiff Union. In uh, in the autumn, so I got a ticket for that. You shed head as well, aren't you? Yeah, man. Cool. That'd be good, man. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, we could have tried and failed to get you a free ticket. Do you reckon we couldn't really, could we? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, should we get into this week's way? 1992. Everyone remember it? Like it was 32 years ago. <laughs> So if you are watching this, please do give it a thumbs up. Uh, let us know your favourite singles, albums, memories from 1992. Leave a comment below, start a conversation. If you are listening to this, then please do rate and review. 
it really does help us get the podcast down. Oh, God, the thing I want to bring up first is the school trip to the Olympics in Barcelona. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> You're let that lie, are you? Bloody oh, brilliant man. that was, wasn't it? Life-changing, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It really was, yeah. actually, for me. Yeah. <laughs> Just a bit of context. I didn't go on this trip. All the cool kids went on the trip. That was good, though. Stayed in tents, and there was like all these schools from all over the country, basically, weren't there? In this in this campground, yeah, and uh, it's great love. I didn't know that bit. That sounds quite fun. I met someone there. Same Ooh, here. What a lady? Yeah, I didn't really know what to do, so it was quite a stressful experience. But she was nice. So what happened? Tell us more details. I didn't know this. She seemed to like me, and we, we talked to each other, but I didn't really know, you know. What I was meant to do, you know, was I meant to kiss her or? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what did you do? Well, I didn't. I did. I couldn't do it. I couldn't. <laughs> Quite embarrassing, really, to look back on it. But we hung out together and walked around and maybe right. even held hands or something like that. Oh, but... okay. oh, that's nice, man. That's sweet. It's innocent. Mm. It was innocent, yeah. Look, you said you met someone as well. Well, again, no, nothing happened at all, but um, we kept in contact. Um, used to write letters to each other. It wasn't my girl, was it? You nicked her. <laughs> what was her name? Maria. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but I remember, this is so embarrassing. I remember um, she wrote me a letter. I don't know how. She I think she must I think she addressed it to the school and they passed it on to me. And uh, and I, I wrote back and the first, I, could, I, I remember the first line of the letter was, um, to start this letter without any words, I got so high I scratched till I bled. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Uh, I, know, I know, I know, I know. I, mean, I, I, I didn't. I, had, I didn't get high to write the letter. I, I lied. I couldn't think of how else to start it though. We're still Facebook friends, actually. No wonder you're rave on about it all the time. I didn't realise it's like a rompathon. I thought it was just like an innocent school trip. Oh mate, it was. It was no. just the experience. And of we a saw when we saw um, the uh, hundred meters, didn't we? What was his name? That the runner with the lunchbox. <laughs> Linford Christie. Linford Christie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Linford yeah. Christie. <laughs> we didn't see him. Did you see his lunchbox? We did. Did we? Did. Right, I'm bored of your Barcelona story now. Let's make the whole wang about it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get on with it. Luke, so you've, you're going to give us a bit of a, a lead into 1992 so people can put themselves in that. In that time. Um, I mean, the big event of the year was the Tory scum got re-elected uh, yet again <laughs> when everyone thought they were... Uh, Labour were going to win and uh, all the polls were showing Labour were going to win and um, yeah. they uh, they just pipped it with a John Major John Ma- uh, the, the famous uh, It's the Sun What Won It uh, headline Premier League started Ah, good one Yeah, good one mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, the whole yeah. industry sports industry changed, right? So who won the first Premier League? Uh, it was Manchester United What else happened? Um, not a lot. There were loads of IRA bombings. Uh, the Queen uh, declared it the uh, anus horribilis. Oh, is that the anus horribilis? Yeah. yeah. Windsor Castle burnt down. I think Sarah Ferguson got a tow job. All kind of stuff happened. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like Sarah Ferguson. Fergie. Yeah. 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 Also, uh, we got, um, well, to coincide with the Premier League, Fever Pitch, uh, Nick Hornby was published so it's that kind of like yeah. football kind of lad stuff just starting to happen you yeah. had Damien Hurst and his shark in formaldehyde thing oh, going on nice. did you know that Benny Hill and Frankie Howard both died a day apart I should know that given my wall of death yeah, yeah. you should they yeah. would have been on it I mean what was the biggest loss to the world equally zero <laughs> 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 and uh, in films um there's loads of good films come out. So yeah. singles, um, which yeah. we talked about in the grand thing. Yeah. Wizard of Dogs, Basic Instinct, Wayne's World, yeah. uh, Dracula. We went to see The Hand That Rocks the Cradle hey, 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 hey. cinema. Was it Bram Stoker's that Dracula? It was Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yeah, I yeah which I watched it. recently. Uh, it's really good. Um, we also went to see Lawnmower Man at the at the cinema. Do you remember? Fucking yeah, we did. Yeah, awful. <laughs> and I think we went to see Boomerang as well at the cinema. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. We did, yeah. 
That was good. I like that. I think we went off on my birthday. What a what a gift. All right. So that that that's 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 the only outside of music research I've done. Oh, well, we can talk about music events. I've got a list of music news. All right. So give us some music news and then we'll talk about some of the music. All right. Kurt and Courtney get married. Oh, I was at 92. Right. 92. Yeah. And Francis Bean is born as well. A bit later. November Rain gets the record for the longest single. Great tune. Great video. Morrissey starts to become a racist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, he, he draped himself in a Union Jack flag and sang National Front Disco at, at Madstock, you know, Madness's Festival. Yeah. And yeah. he got pelted with coins, basically, for it. <laughs> Do we know, does he say in his own words why he did that? He, he just claims he's misunderstood and misinterpreted, but he doesn't explain how, basically. Primal Scream win the Mercury Music Prize with Scream Adelica, which was out the previous year. Freddie Mercury tribute concert. Oh, remember that? Fuck yeah. yeah, I remember that. We all watched it around my house, but there, no one remembers. It was around my house. Was it in that concert? That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I never hosted anything around my house. It was a big thing for me, but no one remembers it. Because <laughs> no, it went so smoothly. That's right. Yeah, we had a barbecue. Is that the same day? Yeah. yeah. That's the only time I've ever hosted all my friends around my house. What was the best moment? Axel Rose was a good moment, wasn't it? Yeah. And it turned yeah. out that he'd just, you know, he didn't rehearse. He just turned up a few minutes before and just did it. Oh, is that right? I didn't know that. The Kill Your Idols t shirt on, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a great t shirt. And did you know there were only 12 number ones in the whole of the year? What, in the UK? Is that, was this in Brian Adams' year? No, it wasn't. No. That's insane, That's right? Astonishing. That's Fifty-two weeks. It's astonishing. Apparently, it's a, it was the lowest since nineteen sixty-two. Lowest since nineteen sixty-two. Yeah, this must have been the height of people buying singles then, keeping these yeah. singles in the charts for so long. And the other, the other event, the last one I, I want to talk about is um, KLF. They well, they basically I... self destructed at the Brit Awards. They had they had extreme noise terror as their band do you remember is that when they got they his had guns these, out? They had machine guns yeah with the fired yeah. blanks and they fired them at the audience and then that was it and then they stopped klf they deleted their back catalog and they disappeared i do like the klf and apparently their brit award was found buried in a field near stonehenge shortly after <laughs> <laughs> i mean i know a lot of their stuff's quite gimmicky but well, they're artists, like proper modern artists, aren't they? Oh, we should all be, while we're talking about events, we should also talk about Reading 92. It was the grunge year. Nirvana, Mud Honey, L7, Screaming Trees, yeah, uh, Smashing one. Pumpkins. And then on the Brit side, Teenage Fan Club, um, Ride, Manic, Therapy, Wonder Stuff, uh, Charlotte, and uh, Mega City 4. Just amazing lineup, right? That's got to be the best Reading lineup ever, hasn't it? Yeah. Why didn't we go? Why didn't we go? Could have too gone. young. We're a bit young, no, we, weren't we? Yeah, That's we right. weren't that young. We well, we went, well, we went to see Guns N' Roses that year. We were quite young. Yeah. To do a camping festival, yeah. we probably weren't yeah. allowed. <laughs> no. So, I'm going to start off with it. This is like the list of the Billboard 200 number one albums of 1992 in America. So, it uh, started off with Dangerous, Michael Jackson. Never mind was number one on uh, in January January eleventh. It's only number one for one week. Quickly replaced by Garth Brooks, "Rope in the Wind." Ah, oh, classic. Right. But then he was. Then never mind was number one again, and then "Rope in the Wind" was number one for a oh, what, Wayne, the battle. Wayne's World then took over for two weeks, and then my favourite. Def Leppard, Adrenalize. Adrenalize, number, yes. Number one yes, in, the, yes, yes. in the US for five weeks. Five weeks at number now, one. Now, we used to listen to that a lot, didn't we, Adrenalize, around your house? Um, the songs off there, do you remember what they were? Let's Get Rocked. Let's Get Rocked. And your favourite, Have You Ever Needed Someone So Bad? Good so. One of the best ballads of all time. Um, I wouldn't go that far, but it's not a bad <laughs> track. But, yeah. but then they were knocked off the hot knocked off the top spot by uh chris cross totally crossed out the 23rd oh, gonna make the jump who were then knocked off the top spot by the black rose oh yeah then totally crossed out with number one for another week and then billy ray cyrus was number one for all of june mm. july august and september achy break your heart well the album was called some gave all 
And then Garth Brooks was number one again. Michael Bolton with Timeless of the Classics. Garth Brooks again. Ice Cubes, Predator. Mm. And, and then The Bodyguard, the soundtrack. Right. So not much wow. happened, really. There wasn't that many albums in, in America. But... You can't, I just can't keep Garth Brooks down. He just kept coming back, didn't he? I mean, that was two different albums. Rope in the Wind and uh, The Chase. I had a, I used to have a, a, a roommate from Texas. He used to um, listen to a bit of Garth Brooks. It's not bad. Some good stuff. Yeah, so it's probably all right. I don't mind a big country, yeah. to be fair. Um, all right. Shall I do the UK? Um, I, I haven't got that. I've just got the top five best-selling singles of 1992. Stay Shakespeare's Sister. Oh, number four. Good tune. I had that on CD single. It's one of the worst songs ever made. Carry on. Wait, wait, wait. No, not, not in the top five. It was pretty big, though. That was one of the 12. 92. What about that Abba medley by Erasure? No, that was just, I think that was number six or something like that. It was, it was yeah, in the top 10. Memory of 92 is pretty good. Abba esque. Yeah. Rhythm is a Dancer. The Rhythm is a Dancer, oh, number two yeah. by Snap. How good is that, right? Brilliant. Good, yes. Great. Still yeah. good. A great, great video as well, isn't it? Can't remember Isn't that one I did at NASA at the, I don't know what it's called, the takeoff thing in NASA? <laughs> Cape Canaveral. Cape Canaveral. Yeah, but what's it, what's it called where spaceships take off from? Spaceships? <laughs> launch <Not> spaceships. <laughs> A launch pad. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> so, okay, I'll go for it. So, number five, oh. KWS, yeah. please don't go. Which was really good, right? Yeah, my brother. Had that. Oh, four, yeah, yeah. Shakespeare's sister. Number three, my personal favourite, Charles and Eddie. Would I lie to you? Uh, would you? No, wouldn't. You wouldn't. <laughs> Two, uh, with Mr. Dancer. And number one, Whitney. Bohemian? Oh, no, so Whitney. Yeah, I everywhere. always love you. Everywhere. It's bodyguard song. soundtrack, right? I went to a cinema to see the bodyguard. It's not bad, actually, is it? I went on a date. Ooh. That's the bodyguard. Went on the bus. Good story, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what happened? What happened while you were actually watching her? Did you try and touch her leg? Did you put your cock up through the bottom of the popcorn box? <laughs> so that when she put her hand in to take some popcorn, <laughs> she was <laughs> grabbed your penis. I was too young for that. I was a teenage boy. We did do, I think we did do some passion, passionate kissing in in yeah. the seats. Heavy petting. Right. <laughs> Moving on. Um, let's do uh, NME albums and singles of the year. Do you want to do uh, albums first or singles first? Do singles first. All right. Um, in backwards order, number five, REM. Which track do you reckon? No, it'd be uh, the, you know, the slow one. Uh, oh, everybody, everybody hurts. hurts. Oh, I thought so too, but it's Drive. Number four, Radiohead Creep. So I think Pablo Honey didn't come out till 93, but the single had come out in 92, mm. I think. Number three, the Manics with possibly their finest hour, Motorcycle Emptiness. Oh, yeah, that's a great song. How good is that, great right? Song. According to my friend, uh, Catherine, hello, Catherine, uh, who is friends with the, with the Manics, she, she, um, she said even to this day, they always play Motorcycle Emptiness first when they play live. Why is my question to you? Uh, because it's the best one. No. Is it guessable? Yeah, yeah, if you're not a total fucking idiot. I don't know. I don't know. Well, <laughs> the answer is, it's because it's their longest song. So right. if there's any technical issues or something yeah. like that, they can work it out within that, whatever, six, six and a half minutes or whatever that, that the song is. Mm, okay. So it gives them a chance to iron out any technical difficulties in the first song, which is why That's they play it first. Idea. Why don't they just do that before the concert? Dave, Dave, Dave. Someone who clearly doesn't understand sound. Live music, yeah. <laughs> the room changes, Dave. Like when people fill up the venue, the sound changes. Think no, it's good it you're second, here Dave. with the knowledge to, God's sake. to explain it. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that. Number two is PJ Harvey, Sheila and the gig. And number one is Suede with the Drowners. Uh, Number five, uh, Nick Cave. Hang on, is this top seeds. five albums? Yeah, according to the enemy. So, number five, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, Henry's Dream. Number four is Lemonheads, It's a Shame About Ray. Best indie albums. Well, yeah, 
according to NME. Yeah. PJ Harvey. No. Sonic Youth. No. They're all in the top 20, but not in the top five. Sugar. Number one. Copper Blue. Copper Blue. Enemy gave it number one album of the year. Oh, it's a great album. It's no beast, though, is it? Ah, uh, I don't know, man. They're equally as good. They're very different. I, I was listening to it earlier. I had it on uh, on a up, upstairs earlier. It's really good. It's really Beaster. Good. Copper Blue. If you're not going to get number three, so I'll tell you. It's spiritualized, laser guided melodies. And number two, already mentioned them. REM. Oh, oh yeah. For the oh, back to the people. Yeah. Yeah. Good album, yeah. man. It's it's yeah. There's not a bad track on it, right? I I prefer their early stuff, don't you? Really... <laughs> Indifferent to that, I think. <laughs> yeah, I don't have, I don't have strong feelings either way. Uh, Everybody hurts though. It's fucking amazing. I listened to that earlier as well. I was, I was putting the um, mixtape together. Oh, it's just amazing, right? Everybody hurts. It's a good song, but I don't like it. It's too depressing. No, I don't enjoy to listening be. to it. I like a bit of melancholy. And his voice is really powerful on that as well. Just great. That's quite interesting though, Neil, how you like music that makes you sad. And I, I can't, I just don't want to feel sad. Well, it doesn't really make me sad. I'm quite a melancholic person anyway, I guess. But I think there's beauty in those songs. You know, they have depth to them. That's what I like about it. On with Neil. That's not to say that bands that don't write melancholic songs don't have depth to their music. It's just maybe I don't connect to it in the same way. So 1992, this one it always splits people because uh, I think you either like this band or you don't. Uh, Stone Temple Pilots released Call that year. I did, yeah. I think that <sighs> kind of way. <laughs> not for me. Dave, are you a Stone Temple I, Pilots fan? No. They just weren't very good, I think. That was the problem. It just wasn't very good. It's another band for me. I'm just put off by the name. It's just a bad name, yeah. I think. Well, I like it is that. a bad That's name. The best bit of them. Uh, one album that did come out that year that I really liked was uh, Wish by The Cure. It's a great album. Oh, Probably really? One of pick up yeah. on that. That's the one with Friday, I'm in love. Right. Mm. Really? Uh, I thought that was much earlier than 92. No, 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 no. I remember it being on MTV a lot. And my house, right? It's weird how songs like, didn't exist until a certain year, but you think they've always kind of existed, in it? Mm. Uh, New Miserable Experience by the Jim Blossoms was out. I love. Oh, was it? I love them. Yeah. Mm. I'm getting back into the Jim Blossoms. They're still going. I, I do they? like it. Get them, the, it. get them on the get them on the podcast, man. I'm trying. I am trying. Mm. You, you were never a fan, I know. But... I did not like them, but yeah, I didn't really connect with them like you did. Blind Melon. They had their album out, Blind Men and Blind Men. I mean, No Rain is, is it's just a great song, right? Yeah, but I've been listening to some of their other stuff, and it, it's, it's some good stuff on there. And, and he it's was a bit good more alternative, that, uh, isn't it? It's a bit less mainstream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I saw them supporting Guns N' Roses at, in Milton Keynes. Uh, 93. 93, yeah, Guns N' Roses, mm. The Cult, I think, and Blind Melon. They were good. It was good. It was good gig. Erotica by Madonna was that. Oh, we also had uh, Grave Dancers Union, Soul the Sun. That was out ninety two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody Massive, to shout. It? Yeah, that it was. Fucking album was everywhere. Yeah. They must have sold a billion copies of that album. A billion. Yeah, <laughs> must be a bad bit. Somebody to shove was a good tune, and of course, Wide Away Train was. Good, right? Oh, well, yeah, and it did have that message, didn't it? Didn't it find a lot of runaway kids? Yeah, I think it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I could say I went to see them live and it was the worst gig I've ever been to. <laughs> Bar none. Yeah. yeah. Dave, have you got any? The thing is, I've got some that might be good talking points, but I wouldn't have listened to them at, at that time. <sighs> Let's do it. Dave's Sweet Oblivion, Screaming Trees came out. That yeah, day. Dave's favourite. That is brilliant. But yeah, you know, I, I, did, I wouldn't have heard that in 92. No chance. No, no. Neither would I. Tori Amos had an album out. What's your views on Tori Amos? I think she's pretty good. Not my cup of tea, but... I always had a bit of a thing for Tori Amos. And mm. PJ Harvey as well. You've already mentioned, mm. but that she yeah. had a big album out. But yeah. Yeah. Dry. Yeah. Body Count with Body Count. Yeah, they were really cool, right? Yeah, it kind of worked, didn't it? Yeah, totally. 
Totally. It's great. Dave, you got any more? Uh, Pavement as an album out. Yeah. Slightly than Enchanted. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good record. Haven't listened to it. Is it worth for listening to? Do you reckon? Yeah, I think you'd like it. It's very kind of lo fi. It's very, it's got, it's got, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's got lo fi charm. I think you'd like it with a bit, with a pop sensibility. It's good. And another band we, I think we all like from the time Babes in Toyland. Is it Fontanelle? I that guess, I yeah, I've got Fontanelle. I, I guess yeah. that's how you say it. Isn't that the bit, the soft bit on a baby's head? Oh, it might be. Oh, is it? That'd be good if it was. Gordon by Bare Naked Ladies was out this year. Oh, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> Are they the one that did the Chinese chicken thing? <laughs> was that them? No. I don't know. Stick, can your brain start sticking? Watching X Files with no lights on, time to make them. That wasn't Bare Naked Ladies, was it? <laughs> no, I don't think it was. There are a few comedy records out though. They had um, Green Jelly, hey, not comedy, and, and Three Little Pigs, pigs which um, I which was we that liked, too. We? Yeah, I bought that. And it's not oh, really a novelty mind. record, but kind of Ugly Kid Joe. Um, God, everything great. about you came out like in '92 as well. Oh man, I had the single, loved it. The album was, I remember the album being pretty good as well. America's Most Wanted or Least yeah, Wanted or something. Right. Is that what it's called? I think it was all right. You mentioned the film, but the uh, single soundtrack was out that year as well. Yeah, yeah. Catherine Wheel had Ferment out in nineteen ninety two. Also, Curve as well. Um, Curve, Doppelganger yeah. came out in ninety two, so they were a similar kind of thing going on, right? Yeah, Lush. That uh, Matt Spooky. Oh, really? Didn't get that. Yeah, that's okay. ninety two. Uh, if we're going over to the UK, then we got um, Carter. USM had the, yeah, the, well, the album's called 1992, uh, the love album. Had um, the only the only living boy in New Cross, one of their best songs on it. Um, also, uh, Mega City Four had their best album, Sebastopol Road, came out in '92. One of my favourite albums, great album that. Uh, your favourite, Neil, Utah Saints. Oh, was that '92? '92, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, uh, you, yeah you, they... Utah Saints. Yeah, brilliant. We missed a few Go from on. America. Yeah, some big ones. Rage Against the Machine. Rage Against the Machine, man. Incredible. One of the greatest debuts ever. I mean, ever. I, I don't think I can still get done for this. I stole that from HMV. <laughs> the CD? Yeah. Mate, Dumbly. good work. Put it in my guitar case. Oh, man, they would have approved of that, though. Don't worry. But, yeah. you know, you can still get done for it. Oh. <laughs> Retrospectively. <laughs> Yeah, mate, you're safe. You're safe. Look at Operation Pear Tree or whatever it was called. <laughs> True. Yeah. Dirt. Dirt. That was 92. Alice in Chains, 92. And next to it on the shelf, Faith No More, Angel Dust. Their best album came out in 92. Yeah, I mean, 91 was a year, wasn't it? But 92, there's still some incredible stuff coming out. Yeah. Um, Dirty Sonic Youth was out that year as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good. Album, Probably their right? most like commercially successful album, I guess. So. Yeah, I quite like that. Album. Yeah, but it was also loads of good dance stuff. So Prodigy Experience came out in '92 as well. I bought that on tape and I listened to it down Seaford Beach. I mean, Out of Space is still one of the that. fucking best songs of of that of that time, right? Rave was um was was peak, right? They'd, um, do you remember Shut Up and yeah. Dance, Raving, We're Raving? That was uh, 92 as well. Yeah. Aunt pulled uh, Walking in Memphis. Do you remember that tune? <laughs> also, yeah. we talked about it before. SL2 on a ragged tip was 92. We talked about it last week or whatever. Check your head, Beastie Boys. Yeah, man. Got it behind me somewhere. Unplug Derek Clapton. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on. That was the, that was, he wrote that song for his. Boy, you fell out the window. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for bringing it down, Neil. Uh, right. Going blank again. Well, yeah, famously, we didn't go and see them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Things. Well, that fork in your road. That was the fork, yeah. Well, speaking of senseless things, they didn't have an album out, but Hold It Down and Homophobic Asshole were both released as singles in 92. Was that 92, was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold it down was a top 20 hit. Brilliant song. Big, big check. Yeah. 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 It's 92. What's that album 
uh, to your around your left shoulder with the Benetton. This one? Mm. logo. This is Blagger's ITA. Do you remember in the interview with uh, Mambo Taxi? Uh, yeah, she was yeah. talking about uh, she went on tour with Blagger's ITA. Yeah, it's called yeah United Colors of Blagger's ITA. Uh, really interesting kind of. Um, Big on kind of like anti-fascism and stuff like that. Um, interesting mm. kind of UK indie band at the time, which I, I really like. Oh, uh, can we talk about this? Well, yeah. Depends on what it is. Next to it, the this is a compilation album. That's cheating a little bit, but um one of the, the finest compilation albums ever made. So International Pop um Underground. So there was a big um festival basically, um in um I guess in Olympia in Washington. Run by K Records, right? As I'm sporting the T-shirt, yeah. and this has got oh man, it's got well, it's got Nathan of Ulysses. I'm going to talk about later. Melvin's L7, um, Courtney Love, Fugazi, Bratmobile, all of these bands um, played live basically, and it's just them them live at their so-called convention, and it's, uh, mm. it's a really great kind of document of uh, US indie as it was at the time. Um, are you the only person that owns that? <laughs> Quite possibly. <laughs> Speaking of that, Bikini Kill had their first EP out in 92 as well. Quick shout out to uh, Dark Throne. This is a black metal classic, Blazing the Northern Sky, um, which is, again, just just basically changed the game, you know? Just incredible. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, it's changed uh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't it? <laughs> Without that album, none of this would have happened. We wouldn't be. <laughs> you we might wouldn't not. have been born. You might not. No, well, there you go. <laughs> hey, up, up by right, Ted Fred was out. <laughs> it was, yeah. Yeah. They're like fucking reform party wankers these days, aren't they? Yeah, I think they're they like, are they, are they, they that bad? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like appear on GB News and shit, don't they? Lawrence Fox did another another one of his uh, speeches out in London somewhere, and there was no one there again. He, he just does all <laughs> these things, and there's no, no one turns up. He's got this microphone. There's always about twenty people there. He's really he's a real embarrassment, isn't he? What a tosser! A um, couple of shout outs um, on the electronica front. Aphex Twin released um, Selected Ambient Works 85 to 92, which is, I wish I had a copy of that. That's ah, it's so good. His videos just, just just really freak me out. Oh, man. It's come fucking to horrible. So <laughs> Brilliant. The whole. Yeah. With this face on lots of little kids. Yeah. It's great. Man. It's fucking horrible. Again, amazing, though. Also, Warp Records released their Artificial Intelligence compilation album, um, which I think, I think um, Sam posted on the Facebook page about that a few weeks ago. And it basically, it was like the start of kind of those kind of, kind of like, um, well, at the time they called it intelligent dance music. It's kind of like dance music that you don't need to dance to, if you know what I mean. It's like dance music that you can listen to at home. Again, uh, yeah, that was a that was a real game changer, actually. Now, I, yeah, got re-released on on vinyl last year, actually. Elton John released the one. <laughs> What's on that? <laughs> Fuck that! <no. laughs> Never heard of it. We didn't mention L Seven yet, did we? Did we skip L Seven? Still, uh, we can still mention. We talked about them, but not not the. Well, we spoke about no. We yeah, yeah we didn't. It was bricks are heavy out in ninety two. Ninety two bricks are heavy, man. Loved it. Had it on cassette. They were just a great band, weren't they? Every interview is like, what's it like being in an old girl band? What's it like being in an old girl band? No one ever spoke right. about the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were just a great band, right? The infamous, the word thing and the, the Reading Festival, which I'd forgotten about, the tampon mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, rock, rock and roll. Stuff. Rock and roll. Yeah. yeah. Stereo MCs connected was that in 92. I really liked that when it came out. Yeah. I think I like, yeah, my I sister like had a copy of the album. Yeah. I remember we used to listen to it down the beach quite a lot, jumping off the groin. Who's better, Stereo MCs or Stack a Bow? They just had that one hit, didn't they, down the drain? And it was sounded exactly like Stereo MCs. Arrested Development. That album, 16 days, 8 years, 15 months or whatever it was called. 
What's that? Never got into them. No. Nah. I think the girls we hung around with liked the rest of development. I was never really into them. They're a pretty big name for the time, right? They were, yeah. Yeah. Did they do Everyday People? Was that Arrested Development? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah Everyday People. Which is all right, at best. Oh, fucking hell, Keep the Faith, Bon Jovi was 92. Yes, it was. I've got that. I forgot about that. Yeah, that was his big return. A good return, right? It's great. Yeah, he had a, he's had his hair chopped. Looks good. There's some good tunes on there. That's a good album, that. Keep the Faith, didn't it? Uh, what else? <laughs> 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 there were like two or three big hits, weren't there? I will, I will love you always. Ah, uh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always, yeah. it was called cool, right? always. always. You too must have had an album in '92. I don't think they did. No, no. you like a bit of you too, don't you? Don't. I don't. Oh, really? Uh, That's the kind of mainstream shite you usually go for. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was hiding in front of uh, the Shaman earlier. That was out in '92. Boss Drum. They influenced a lot of people, didn't they? A lot of, a few people have cited the shaman. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the on the podcast, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Shanice said, "I love your smile." <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. I like? <laughs> I really like that song. Piss off. <laughs> and boys to men, end of the road, which I I liked as well. That was from Boomerang. Oh, was that in Boomerang? Yeah. Yeah, that was the, the song of that film. Right. We used to I try think. to click our fingers in time and shit like that, right? Remember the guy that just did the ad lib? He did, a, he did like a spoken bit with a deep voice. Like a scat. Hey, baby. With a deep voice. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, 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 I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> he just said some random nonsense. <laughs> hey, baby. I'm mean, thinking about you, baby. That yeah, kind of thing, no, right? no. yeah, yeah. I, That's it. Oh, but talking of bands with bad names, that's got to be the worst name ever. <laughs> I could barely Boys hear or men. say it without feeling sick. There's a Japanese band called Mr. Children, which <laughs> is pretty, pretty, pretty unnerving as well, right? EMF stigma was that in 1992, What's which that? I love. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's their best out. I didn't yeah. like that. Okay. Bit of an overlooked album, I think, sometimes, but. It's uh, it's a good one. Yeah, didn't know that was ninety two. Paul Weller released an album in nineteen ninety two. Which one? Wildwood. It's just called Paul Weller. Huh. First solo album. There you go. He has some mm. great solo tunes, didn't he? Paul Weller. I'm uh, not not a Paul Weller fan. You ask me. Oh, really? He's that's... a really interesting guy. He does like really kind of like experimental jazz things, and he's just like a really interesting, yeah, cool guy. I hate jazz. Yeah, well, fuck you. Uh, we did brush, we brushed on it. I think we brushed on the single, but Generation Terrorist was out in 1992. Yeah, yeah. Great album. What's their best album? My favourite Manix album. You'll disagree, but I like This Is The Truth. This is my truth, tell me yours. Right. <laughs> this, is, this is my truth, tell, tell me yours. I know it's a bit commercial and stuff, but it's got some great tunes on it. I mean, I've got to say the Holy Bible because it's the yeah, but that's just the weird fucked up one. I knew yeah. you'd say that, yeah. but yeah, yeah, it's just too weird and fucked up for me. I never sort of sit here and think, I oh, know, I'll listen to that really weird fucking album that no one understands. <laughs> but that one. Oh man, if white America told the truth for one day, its world would fall apart. Is a great song title. I wish I did love it. I really do because I'd love to love that album. But each time I'm like, I just don't. I can't. That's fair, man. <laughs> That's fair. You know, it's intense, isn't it? It's an intense album. Not an easy listen. No. No, it's good though. Lyrically, it's, it's a great album, but I just can't. Yeah, I just can't. Man. Dave? That's fair. Do you have a favourite Mannix album? You know, I don't like the Mannix that much. But you're from Wales. I mean, I, I sort of respect them and I think they do have some good songs, but it's not a band I ever choose to put on. Ah, fair enough. Each their own. Yeah. It's a bit too noisy for me. What? <laughs> Even <laughs> like, the latest uh, stuff. I said each their own, and then you said something ridiculous. <laughs> They're not noisy at all. <laughs> it's not. It's more. It's not noise as in loud. Just like not night. Like <laughs> the guitars, mate. You should listen to. Dark, They're not dark set, soft blazing enough. the northern sky. <laughs> 
It changed everything, man. <laughs> didn't it? I don't think I'm going to like that. It was a landmark that. in black metal. That's your challenge, Dave. After making you listen to Entombed for for night, I'm gonna your homework yeah. is to listen to Dark Throne, A Blaze in the Northern Sky. It's really good. It's really good. It's got those kind of those kind of trigger. Ah, oh, so good, so good. All right, so shall we do our uh, top three? Let's do singles first. Singles of night, uh, songs of ninety two. Doesn't have to be released as a single, but single tracks. Um, number three. Uh, the Shaman, Ebenezer Good. I'm obsessed with that song. I think once every six months or so, I'll, I'll watch their performance on Top of the Pops on YouTube. <laughs> I, I think I think it's the most subversive song ever in the UK charts. Think about it. This is at the height of fucking drug paranoia and all that nonsense, right? Yeah, this was when the whole Leah Betts thing was out. Exactly. Kind of stuff, right? There on top of the pop saying, ease are good, repeatedly. <laughs> Just basically <laughs> saying, ease are good. It's mental. How did that, it they got mental. away with it? Yeah, and yet Frankie got banned for relax. Exactly. It's ridiculous, they got away right? With that. It's because they can always make the argument that it is just about Ebenezer Good. There's no way you can These disprove it. Are is there? Good. It's yeah, the chorus. I know, but you, know, you can always <laughs> make the argument. Oh, man. It's so and That's the great thing about it. Right? So that's my number three, which I, oh, I'm, I don't know. I'm just obsessed with that, that song, strangely. Um, number two, uh, Rage Against the Machine, Killing in the Name. Again, yeah, it's good. Just incredible, right? And when you're that age, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. It just felt like the most powerful, like, you know, uh, I don't know, thing you could say, right? Yeah, that's why I stole the album. They made me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I felt bought into the ethos. <laughs> fuck you, I won't do it. So I wouldn't pay for it. Yeah. But like just hearing that, like, yeah, man, fuck you. Oh, yeah, I want to do that. There and then, I, I made a decision yeah. to, to fuck HMP and their yeah. corporate bullshit. Didn't they release an album called Steal This Album? Was that Rage Against yeah. Machine? Or was that a different <laughs> I might have someone did, but it yeah, wasn't I don't know if it was there. Yeah. Again, anyway, just the first time I heard it, I just never heard anything like it, right? That combination of rock and rap and the repeated fuck you. Just, oh, man, it's everything a teenage boy wants, right? I think that could make a comeback now, like and be popular with young people now. That's well, it. it was famously um, number one, wasn't it? Um, whenever it was, like 15 oh, years ago, whenever to, to stop. stop Simon um, Cow. Simon yeah, Cow's yeah, machine. Yeah, yeah. And they, they, yeah. they played on the BBC, do you remember? And they, they promised that they wouldn't swear. And so they started off not swearing and they just go like, I won't do what you tell me. I won't do it. And then, and then of course, you know. How could you not? They, they, Exactly. I mean, what did it's they say? Physically right? impossible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. it might as well have not bothered turning up. It does. Uh, well, spot, they, well, in it? the end, they did the, they did the proper version after like two or three repeat swearings. Clever, isn't it? Cool. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we're running out of word. There's no, there's no swear word left that we can use to shock anymore. You reckon? Make one up. Yeah. That's going to have to be like some hybrids, right? Yeah. Go on then. What's your number one? It's kind of obvious, but um, sugar. If I can't change your mind, it's oh, a great, great song. Fuck, man. I didn't know you liked that. That's one of my favourite songs. I love. It. I listened to it earlier um, in anticipation of this recording. I, I, oh man, just brought everything back. Just loved it. You stole that off me. <laughs> you can have it too, man. It's no competition. Um, yeah, that's my number one, man. It's incredible. And I remember at the time when, when I was when I was heavily into that song it was also the time I was heavily into a girl coincided with with that teenage yeah. heartbreak. Yeah, great song. So good. That's mine. Over to you, boys. Thing is, though, it meant a, a lot to me at the time, but probably not my favourite now. It's Creep by Radiohead. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, Creep. That's a good choice. Yeah, I probably have. Even though I didn't remember it was 92, but Friday I'm in love. And then I'm going swayed for my number one because they were the first, well, them and Radiohead were the first sort of indie Britpop type bands I liked what a lot. Song? What song? I will go with Drowners. Ah, oh, it's an amazing tune, right? Fuck. My top three singles are as follows. Wood must have been out in 92, right? Yeah, it's on the album, it counts. So my top three 
It'll be Wood, Alice in Chains, Jim Blossoms, Jealousy. It's a good tune. It's a good tune. Pure pop. I'm going to go if I can't change my mind as well. Can't change your mind. But I'll be honest, I had forgotten about that song until you mentioned it. I used to listen to that all the time. Wasn't that also on that Loaded album that keeps coming up? Probably. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, no, I was going to say Creep, but Creep wasn't on it. Anyone Can Play Guitar was on it, wasn't it? That's right. All right, so albums. All right, albums. Who wants to go first? I'm not sure what was it out in 92 and what wasn't. We've confused. just been talking just about been them for the last hour. That's why they were easier, because we've just done it. Twat. Charlotte's between the 10th right. and 11th. Definitely right. up there. It's got Weirdo on it. It's great. You're a weirdo. I saw them pretty recently, actually. They were still very good. They were supporting Liam Gallagher. You saw Liam Gallagher? Yeah. Yeah, when? When? You mentioned this. It was in September 23, September 22. Oh, right. So why? Oh, okay. It was, it was good. He had yeah. a, it just had an album out. But there were still, like, some thug types there that he sort of <laughs> attracts. <laughs> Not yeah. geezers. Geezers aren't violent. Right. Anyway. Yeah, I will. I'm going. I'm going to go. Lemonade. It's a shame about really? Ray. Yeah, it's great. Album. It's in my top three. Probably my top three too. You know, to be honest, I can't really have another one because I haven't got one. Because the Radiohead album wasn't '92. Suede album was '92. No. no. So I've just got two. That's fine. That's fine. Two's enough, dude. If I just wanted to fill it, I could say automatic for the people, but I didn't really like that album. Mm. Yeah, you can't use that one then. Have we spoken about Shame About Ray? Well, it's, it's probably going to be in all of our top three, so we can talk about it. Yeah, well, am I going to do my top three? Go on, and you do that, and we can talk about it then. All right, so I'll do my top three. So, uh, same as Dave, I'm going to go three, I'm going to go Shame About Ray. Think about that album. Yeah, it's a perfect album. And it's because all the songs are really quick, mm. there's no boring songs on there, is there? It just mm, goes no. from one pop tune yeah. to the next. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they could have easily made it longer, couldn't they? Yeah. The songs were good enough, uh, but they didn't. Yeah, they just didn't. They didn't yeah. need to. Okay. No. And they, it was, I think it was like it's like 29 minutes or something like that, so you could have the whole mm-hmm. album on one side of a C60, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. again on the other side, so you could just play it and flip it over and play it again. Yeah, yeah, that's record true. Yourself, which Maybe I think I had. Was, yeah, it's just brilliant from start to finish. It's one of those you can just put on in it, and it, you don't have to... You know, most albums, you want to fast-forward a few tracks here and there, don't you? Yeah. Or skip. No filler. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it is a great, great album. Like you say, gets in, gets out, does the job. Yeah, really good. Mm. You know, the puzzle piece behind the couch that makes the sky complete. Oh... I'm going to go Generation Terrorists for number two. Mm. I did I did love that sort of era of the Manics. Maybe you love us and all that sort of stuff. Or am I? I don't know. I don't know if that's been my top. That's fine, mate. It's good. It's a great album. No, because there's other stuff that I think I like more. Go on, him. Go on. Give, it, give us five, then we'll help you whittle it down to three. No, no, no. I've got, I got three. I've got three. So is Hang that on. one of them or not? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, hang on. I'm hang confused, on. Neil. Was was number two the Manics or I've got rid of the Manics now. I'm gonna go with the Cure Wish for number two. It's a really great album. I I love the Cure anyway. Don't know enough about them to take the piss out of you for it, so actually the the Cure are quite popular with the youth again thing. At least the daughter's circle, yeah, quite like them. Oh, wow. Well, that's good. I don't know if he should be wearing that makeup anymore, though. He's starting to look like a weird old lady. Oh, he looks great. <laughs> but it's good to have that. You know, if you you can put on your mask to go and do your work, do your interviews. Yeah, no, I think it's good that he has kept it, it up. At home. Yeah, no, fair play to him, you know. His hair's nearly as mad as yours. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about Dave, by the way, not me. My number one, I'm just going to, I'm going to go with Dirt, obviously. It's a fucking of great album. One of the best albums ever made. Fact. Well, we talked about it a lot in the Grunge special, so don't need to go over it, but um, yeah, agreed. Yeah. You know, actually, I was, I was looking through the track listing earlier because I was trying to pick a tune to put on the, on the, on the mixtape and they're all good. It was kind of difficult to pick a 
to pick a song because I was like, oh, that one. Oh, but what about this one? Yeah, it's it's really good. It's really good. Um, my top three then. Um, number th- well, they're, they're kind of obvious this this time. Um, well, some of them. What about that album that changed the world? <laughs> That's not in my top. Not in my top three. I'm gonna go for um, Nathan of Ulysses. Uh, plays pretty right. for baby. It's their second album. Uh, my man in Spinonius again. Oh, fucking um, Spinonius. Who is this guy? <laughs> Get him on the podcast, man. It's my dream. You wouldn't be able to handle it if he came on. I don't think I would. Do you know what? He's the he's one of the only people. He's got his own section on my on my record <laughs> shelf. Only a couple of people have got their own section, and he's one of them. Uh, so that that's that's my number three. Just really good kind of. Um, oh, I don't know rock and roll. Will anyone have heard it? Or no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but they should. They should. It's so good. Uh, number two, I'm going to go for um, Faith No More, Angel Dust. Ah, oh, fuck, I've forgotten not? about that one as well. How could well, you I not? didn't, because I, mean, I forgot. One of my favourite bands. It's my favourite album. Um, uh, yeah. I'd, I'd put that, I'd probably put that where I'd take too the late. cure out. No, no, <laughs> no. We no, offered to help no. you, mate. Yeah, no, I've forgotten late. about no, that No, 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 no. The answers are final. They're locked in. Fuck's sake. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, number one is Lemonhead. It's a shame about Ray. I just love uh, that album. Yeah, it's perfect. It's nothing, there's nothing, you know, like um, John Peel always used to say about Teenage Kicks, there's nothing you can add to it or take away from it yeah, yeah, to make yeah, it better. Yeah. I think I feel the same about um, that album. If you Nothing you can add or take away that would improve it. You but know, that might not be a compliment. True, but it means for what it is. I mean, you could say that thing, about right? Main Street's album too, couldn't you? No, I would take away yeah. all of it, especially the guitar. <laughs> Therefore, Shane Van Ray was the best album of 1992. That's a fact. That's a Proved. Fact. No, yeah. no one can argue with that. Well done, Lemonheads, for winning 1992. Congratulations. <laughs> well, we've learned a lot about 92. We've learned about how diverse it was in terms of music coming out, much more than 91. Who keeps Good tapping job. their cock on the desk? <laughs> Do you know the um the Japanese word for uh, for ninth, like the ninth of the month, is yeah. uh, is kokonoka. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's, not. <laughs> it's every time I hear it, it just sounds like kokonoka. Always, always makes me yeah, makes me <laughs> smart. <laughs> I should call you from now on. Kokonoka. That's it for this one. That's our rundown of nineteen ninety two. If you are watching, please do give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Let us know your favourite album, singles, memories, 1992, and subscribe to the channel. And if you're listening, then please do rate and review because it really does help get this podcast found so that other people can uh, tune in. Luke? Well, I apologise in advance for anyone we've left out. I'm sure we've left out loads of people's favourite bands and albums from 92. But it's all, I haven't even finished it. It's already two and a half hours long, the mixtape, and I haven't even finished it. So I'm going to have to whittle it down to, to the essentials. But as we found out, it's just so such a diverse amount of different kinds of music going on in 92. And it was all, it was all great, right? So it's going to be a diverse mixtape. I hope someone listens to your mixtape. You put quite a lot of effort in it. I don't know if anyone actually That's listens. all right. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. <laughs> I always listen so to it. Dave listens to it. There I you listen go. To That's, why. That's enough. That's enough. It's three of us. They are good, though. I do, I've do. i said it before, but you, you definitely do need to go and listen to them. Luke puts a lot of time and effort to them, and they are good. That means you. Next week, we've got a um, pair from The One Who Dies On, which is a good one. Yeah, he's a really lovely guy, and he's got some really good stories. Definitely tune in for that one. But it is in Swedish, though, isn't it? The whole thing's in Swedish, yeah. 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 Dave? See you in a minute.